Good morning everybody, thanks for taking the time to watch this. This video is intended to be a replacement for my new driver basics videos because they were a little bit long and people have stuff to do so you don't need to burn 40 minutes watching some videos about basic stuff, we'll just cover it really fast here. So I'm driving out in uh, Peoria right now, I'm about to go up to a four-way stop sign. So what I'm going to do with this is just basically go over everything you need to know driving in this state to not get pulled over and not break any laws. And most of the people that you see out there driving are breaking laws every two minutes. And people wonder why they get pulled over for things that are, you know, honestly, they may be really minor, really stupid things like stopping at the wrong place, not making a full stop, turning right on red, things like that. I'll show you every little thing you need to know. So we're coming up to a four-way stop sign, and this is not like a two-way stop where one street keeps going and one street has to stop. This one, everyone has to stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to here. I'm gonna signal to the left because I'm making a left turn. Anytime you come up to any stop sign and there's any lines on the ground, crosswalks, little one line for stopping at the cars, you stop before that line. Look both ways. This is not a blind corner, so I can actually see all the way down all the streets in every direction. And once it's your turn, you go. Now, what do I mean by once it's your turn, how do you know? Well, if you're the first person to stop, then it's your turn to go. If you stop at the same time as someone else and the other person's on the right, it's their turn to go, and then you go. So it's always first, first to stop is the first to go. And then if there's more than one person, then whoever was on the right, if they stop at the exact same second. But that's why it's really important to make a complete stop because most people will just roll through the stop sign. As you saw up there, we were the last people to come up to the stop sign. So I just yielded to the other traffic and no one really makes complete stops and that you can get a ticket for, a big fat ticket. All the tickets in Arizona are pretty expensive. So as a new driver, you don't want any tickets. Make sure you do a complete stop. Now we're coming to a, a stop light. Uh, this one is a really cool one. Like all the new lights in Arizona, this one has a giant gore between the left and the through lanes. This giant triangle that separates you out further to the left. What that does, if you notice, this white car that's turning left across the street is not blocking my view at all because it's moved way over. And now I can see that I have plenty of room to yield to. There's no oncoming traffic I could go. So in Arizona, it's a little different than some other places. You're allowed to turn left on green here. And in some places you can't do that. If you ever go to San Diego or LA, most of the time they're gonna have a red arrow all the time and you can only turn if you have a green arrow. So it's a little different. A uh, left turn yield here has to be done carefully. That was the best case scenario for a left turn. No one was coming, the crosswalks were empty, everything was fine. So now we're gonna come to a two-way stop, or this is uh, in a neighborhood. And again, I'm watching my speed. I don't have a stop sign here, but I have to stop because someone's coming and they have a through street and I have a dead end here. So this is just a T intersection where you just do a normal yield. So now I'm gonna go down to the next street and there's a, a two-way stop up here where two of the streets have stop signs and the main road just keeps going through. Notice this person didn't really take it easy around the corner, they're just in a hurry to get to work and they almost hit the curb. Don't be like these people. It's not, uh, it's one of the most cringeworthy behaviors in driving to speed through neighborhoods where people, this is 8.30 in the morning on a, on a Tuesday, so people's kids are walking to school, people are trying to go to work, you don't need someone that's in this panic because they slept in too late, running over. So this is a two-way stop coming up. Me and the street across the street have a stop sign, the main road does not, so we have to stop. Now this one doesn't have any lines on the ground, doesn't have any crosswalks or any sidewalks that go through it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop at the sign here. Now I'm gonna take a second and put my hazard lights on, put the vehicle in park so I can talk about the lateral curb line. This is a big deal that you need to know. In Arizona, you're not legally required to stop where I stop at the sign. I stop always before I pass the stop sign, and then what I do is look at, it's kind of, you can see okay this way, and there's, it's kind of hard to see. So what I'm going to do is now that I've made a stop, you're allowed to come all the way up to this lateral curb line, which look it up on Google if you don't know what that is. Now I can see better. Now I can go. So it is legal to skip the stop sign at that intersection and pull all the way up to the lateral curb line and make you stop there. However, I wouldn't do that as a habit, or at least I wouldn't roll up fast to that line as a habit, because people like to ride their bicycles uh, really fast, and sometimes people on bicycles don't follow the rules of the road 
actually more often than not they don't follow any of the rules they don't stop at stop signs or any of that stuff and they just go like 40 down these streets on their bikes which is an exaggeration i know but they go really fast and you don't want to just pop out and scare people or other cars if you just notice a lot of people will do that though they'll just kind of fly out past the stop sign most of the time never make a full stop and then just go right in front of traffic sometimes not a good idea so be careful at stop signs all intersections are dangerous places on the road they're the most dangerous place on the road not the freeway not driving in downtown that's not the most dangerous place to drive driving in the city around intersections such as stop signs and stoplights that's where most of the crashes are going to happen and that's where most of the bad injuries happen so you can see this person on the right has done just what I said before where they come up to the lateral curb line or someplace between the stop sign and curb line where they can see better and they waited there and yielded so that is a correct legal way to do it although if I was any closer to that car that probably would have like startled me how they popped out so fast now again we're at another four-way stop stop them before the line I'm the last one here so I should be the last one to go and of course you don't just fly out there because it's your turn you also got to watch out some people will try to cut you off or just run the stop sign altogether and you don't want to just pop out in front of them because they might hit you and it will be partly your fault if that happens Arizona's right-of-way laws are pretty um, nebulous when it comes to who's at fault usually it's both people in a crash so even though you might have a green light doesn't mean you have the right-of-way it is your responsibility to look left and right before you allow yourself to go through an intersection it's common sense look both ways before you walk across the street you should also one of the really good things about driving Arizona is uh, u-turns are pretty much legal everywhere as long as it doesn't say no u-turns on the sign and as long as you're not at the top of a hill or cutting off oncoming traffic you can do a u-turn so notice that I pulled out into the middle of that gap there waited for all the traffic to be out of the way so I had a huge space behind me because u-turns take a little longer than regular turns and I turned into the outside lane. Now you're allowed to pick whatever lane you want on a U-turn. When you turn at a light, like such as turning right on red or left on green, you have to take the first lane every time or you can get pulled over. But when you're in a U-turn, just pick whatever lanes your car fits into. Some cars turn really sharp and some don't. So again, on the left, you can notice the giant gore area here. All the newer parts of town with big wide roads have these gore areas and the main purpose of those to help you see better when you're doing a left turn. They're very effective, they're very safe. We're gonna show some more intersections with and without the gore area and how to do left turns without breaking any laws and or hurting yourself. So, stay so this light has just turned red and we're approaching a school zone so we get to do a right on red here. Now always make a stop when you turn right on red. This is the first thing I got pulled over for when I was a little kid, I didn't know that. And I had to learn it from a cop telling me. So now that I've stopped and I've verified no one's in the crosswalk I'm pulling up to my lateral curb line so I can see better you want to look both left and right and also across the street and ask yourself what is that stoplight doing right now if the people across the street have a green arrow they might be intersecting with you really soon so you want to be aware of all the crosswalks every direction before you go when you're turning right on red you still have to stop and you still have to yield to everyone so now that I'm getting to a school zone I can see this is one of the most important things when you're driving is to pay attention to this stuff there's a sign in the middle of the street up here it says 15 no passing so that is a very serious thing this is a zero tolerance area you want to be going like 12 when you get to this and just coast through the sign also says stop when children in crosswalk now when he gets his feet up on the sidewalk and he's completely out of the crosswalk I can keep going and after I pass the crosswalk I can go back to 25 you don't have to go all the way to the back of the backward sign at 15. That's for the other side of the road to do. And again, this person in front was in a big hurry. They just pull out in front of traffic. Who cares? There's a lot of entitled people out there that just think that they're more important than everyone else. And that's just a, a daily fact of life that you got to deal with. Everyone's very uh, in a hurry, in a rush all the time. But granted, it's the end of rush hour, so it's to be expected. So now this one had a clear speed limit sign of... 30 on the road however if I didn't see a speed limit sign there's always a default speed limit in Arizona if it's not a freeway it's 25 so if you're driving around you're like hmm what's the speed limit here I don't want to be speeding if you see like rooftops and houses it's probably 25 maybe 30 just don't go too fast because the cop can give you a ticket for that and now we're going on a curvy road this is a very important thing 
when you're driving, you see that truck up there, way down there, that's where you want to be looking. When you're driving, especially on curvy roads, but on all roads in general, you don't want to be looking at the road immediately right in front of you most of the time. You want to be looking really far ahead of you because you want to see if there's construction, car crash, something going on up there, loose dog in the street. Wow, another non-yield over a double yellow line. So don't. So here I'm coming up to make a right on red again. And I'm going to make my full stop at the line here. And it's pretty blind because of this car on the left of me. I can't really see anything. So after I verify no one's in the crosswalk, now I can see that it's safe to go because no one's coming down the road up there. And you only turn into the first lane. That's the thing you got to remember. You can get ticketed for pulling into a different lane in Arizona. Some states you can turn into whatever lane you want, but here it's got to be the Now we're coming up to a good kind of left turn. This one has arrows. This is the safest type of left turn to make in the city. This one up here has some designated turning lanes. I have my left signal on right now. I need to look at the blind spot into the yellow lane before I pull in there. And I'm going to go ahead and get into this outside lane. Now, there's a lot less cars on the other lane, but I like to take the outside lane, and you should too as a new driver, unless you have to make an immediate left turn after your turn. But if you take this outside lane, think about it this way. You're going to be turning side by side with other people. And if you're in that inside lane, very often what happens is the people in the outside lane will just mid-intersection just come into your lane and just change lanes through the turn. But if you're in the outside lane, you have a little space on the right side of you where you can kind of escape someone else's stupidity if they're texting and driving and they pull into the wrong lane or they come into your lane. You have options in this lane, so it's a little safer. Now, this will also not put us into the first lane on the next street. This will put us into the middle lane on the next street because if you follow the line with your eye, and also I stay about three feet away from this line that goes through the intersection. That way I remain in my lane the whole time. But now this puts me in the middle lane. And then after I'm finished turning, I can safely make a lane change back to the right. Now a safe lane change involves first using your blinker for a few seconds, checking your mirrors to make sure it looks like no one's coming up either to pass you on the right or in your immediate area. And then you check your blind spot by turning your head 90 degrees to the right and kind of with the peripheral vision you're just looking anything a little bit behind your right rear view mirror that's where you want to be looking on the right side so there's always google images you can search for blind spots in cars and you can kind of see where it's going to be but all cars have them it's important before you get out of your lane anytime even going into a right or left turn lane always check your blind spot so right now i'm driving on happy valley road and i'm doing exactly 45 I have my cruise control on at 45, which I I recommend that young people would use that. Not right away though. First, get yourself good at controlling your throttle by moving your feet in very small amounts to be able to balance your speed at the speed limit on your own before you start using cruise control. But it's a great way to make sure you don't accidentally get a speeding ticket. Now what I did here, and this is a very important thing in Arizona, is I just moved to the middle lane. Why? Well, after this light, right after the light pole up in the trees they have a little yellow diamond sign and it's got one bar and another bar on the right leaning into it which means this road narrows up here and you have to merge if you're in the right lane so i got over early ahead of time because you can see the area we just passed is like the pinch point of that merge and waiting for the last second or not paying attention to merge like a lot of people do out here can cause stressful danger panic situations and uh, other people that are very aggressive trying to get to work in the morning because they slept in too long will not be merciful and will not move out of the way so i like to just get over early and in some states that's the law as soon as you pass that sign you have to merge like uh, for example oklahoma has a state law where if you wait too long to merge you can be fined by the police unfortunately we don't have that here but we definitely need something like that Something to be mindful of when you're driving in a straight line is one of them is to pay attention to your speedometer. Arizona has a huge problem with speeding. Everyone speeds all the time out here. Everyone. They think it's okay. Technically, you could get a speeding ticket for one over, although it is kind of rare. Uh, cops can pull you over for anything. It's discretionary. So if they want to write tickets for three over on a the road, they'll start doing it. And it's happened to me before when I was younger. I got a ticket for two over on a road just like this. So that's why I don't speed. You can choose two or not you know speed whatever it's up to you some people just go five over because many cops will be okay with it but some won't so anyways uh keep your speed under control because on a straight road 
it feels like you're going slower than you really are, which is maybe some of the reason why people speed a lot out here, because in, for example, Pennsylvania or other uh, areas out in the country, you'll have a lot of curvy, windy roads. Out here, everything's a grid, and the most of the roads are straight lines, so of course, you know, you're going to feel like you're going slower than you are. Now, what I need to do here is go ahead and make a left lane change. So I'm hitting my blinker, I'm checking my mirror and my blind spot. Now that I'm sure it's clear, I'm going to move over because I'm making a left turn up here. And this is a bad type of left turn. This one has no gore between the left turn lane and the, the travel lanes. It also has a very, very bad blind spot. So as opposed to the earlier left turn that you saw where I was completely unobstructed in my view, this one up here, I'm going to hug that left curb and stay close, but look what I can see. Just a couple of cars up there. Now, yes, there has been some opportunities where I could have went, but I'm not 100% sure, and that car could have been hiding someone that's doing like 60 through the intersection, so I'm just going to wait at the line. Now, you don't have to wait at the line. You're allowed to pull out in the middle at every intersection in Arizona. There's no restrictions on that legally, unless it says no left turns or something. But you don't always want to do that because these cars across the street can hide something a lot. And if this is worst case scenario, like I just get a, a red light, oh well, we'll just wait for a green arrow next time, it's not the end of the world, you lose 20 seconds on your drive. As long as you get up early enough and get your stuff together and, and you, have your, uh, you have your stuff in order, you're not going to have to sweat little things like this and you're not going to have to drive around in this weird panic that makes people do stupid stuff. Because left turns at intersections, when you turn you're exposing the side of your car to oncoming traffic, and in this state, everyone speeds. So a speeding Suburban that weighs 6,000 and something pounds going 60 is going to do a lot of damage to your car. So just wait it out. Hey, Green Arrow, now I get to make a guaranteed safe left turn after I check the crosswalk. And no... Now this stop sign up here has some lines on the ground, so I'm stopping before the lines. Now this is a blind turn. I can't see down there, there's a fence in the way. So no one's in this crosswalk. I'm allowed to come up to the lateral curb line. The nose all the way up there. Now, I can see, and I can see there's a car I gotta yield to. He was in the other lane, and I'm not turning into that lane, but I'm still gonna wait. I don't wanna turn next to people, because he might change lanes without using their blinker, randomly, unexpectedly. Don't take it for granted that no one's in that lane, because they might change lanes. And if they hit you at that speed while you're turning, it's going to be a bad, bad, bad time. So here's another unprotected left turn. I have no gore area down here. Now what I'm doing is I'm stopping back here. I'm not going to crunch up all tight on this bumper. That's a really common mistake that you see a lot of people do is they get really close at stoplights. What if someone that's texting and driving, which is a big problem in Arizona, what if someone that's texting and driving is not looking and they hit you in the back at like 30 miles an hour while you're sitting at a light? If you chose to get that close to that other car, you would get smashed into that car in front of me, and then you would be financially liable for paying for the damage to that car just because you allowed yourself to get so close. So, moral of the story is, don't get close at lights. I leave enough space for another car. The angle of this camera lens makes it look like I'm like 30 feet behind this guy. I'm just enough room that I could fit one small car in between us. It's about 15 feet is how far I am away from this car. So you don't have to be really far away, but you want to make sure that you can see some street between you and the other car and you can see their tires on the ground. Now here I'm going to do more of an advanced technique, which is pulling out in the middle, because I see a gore across the street. Now that I see it's clear, I can go. But before I do that, I always make sure to look left and right before I ever pass that crosswalk line into that intersection, because Arizona is number one for red light running, or at least it was in 2016 when I last looked at the statistics. And if we're not number one now, we're probably in the top five. So red light runners, very common out here. Don't just pop out in an intersection when it turns green. Make sure you look left and right first every time. It is your responsibility to make sure an intersection's clear before you go into it. And if you get hit by a red light runner, you will be partly at fault for that, even if you had a green light. And I know this because when I was a young kid, when I was 18, I got in a crash at an intersection where someone ran a red light and I got a ticket for not avoiding a crash even though I was going straight through a green light because that person didn't yield the right of way to me and I entered the intersection without looking left and right and I got hit. So now we're coming up to a roundabout and everybody loves these roundabouts at Happy Valley. These are the Norterra roundabouts. They're actually not the big scary monster everybody makes them out to be. 
They're actually quite easy. There's two rules. There's a yield sign up here, and a yield sign only has one meaning. It doesn't mean slow down. It doesn't mean stop. It means you don't have the right of way. So I'm coming up to a yield sign. Now i got to look to the left, see if anyone's coming around the circle, and no one is. So now I can go. Now the lane lines are completely worn out and invisible at this roundabout, so you have to really be careful. And there's also a merge at the end of the roundabout, so the road goes from three lanes to a two-lane roundabout to a one-lane bridge, which is why the traffic is so bad here in the afternoon. And also, roundabouts are um, not very common out here, so people don't really know what to do. The speed limit on the bridge up here is 35. I'm giving this pedestrian a wide berth. I don't know, uh, that's not very common to see people walking up here. But anyways, here comes another yield sign. So you just, two rules in the roundabout. Just wait at the yield sign, yield to the other traffic in the circle. And go through it about 15, I don't know, 20 if you want. Stay in your lane around the roundabout. Don't go over the lines. A lot of people go over the lines at this roundabout and mess it up for everybody and pull out in front of people. So just make sure you yield, make sure you stay in your lane. You won't have any troubles with it. And like all driving situations, a little bit of patience will pay off really big. So just take your time. And if you're not sure, just wait. If someone honks at you, who cares? Doesn't doesn't hurt you to get honked at. It's just really, it's how you learn. You get honked at enough, you learn to stop uh, taking too long. That's, that's good feedback. So my light just turned green. I'm making my left turn. There is no one in sight. Crosswalks left, right, or across the street. So here we go. Now look at the middle lane. See the two double yellow solid lines right there? It is illegal for me to enter this turning lane until it looks like it does now with a solid on the outside and a dotted line on the inside. So when you need to make a left turn on these multi-lane roads out here that are really wide, there's a way that you want to use this yellow lane correctly, and I'll demonstrate that now. My blinker is on. I'm moving into it without slowing down. Now that I'm in the lane all the way, I want to slow down. And I want to pull up until I'm about halfway into that next street, because I want to make my turn nice and wide without turning onto the wrong side of the road or cutting it too tight. Now I have to yield to all the oncoming traffic and they're spaced out just far enough where I don't have enough room in between them. But then after that, if you be patient, here comes a nice big gap. Lots of room to make my turn. So now I'm gonna do a little three-point turn and get out of here. So a three-point turn is part of your driving test. It's a U-turn in a really confined space, just like this little tiny street. So here's how you do a three-point turn. And it's also, in Arizona, it's always legal to do U-turns as long as you don't do it in front of other traffic, um, within 200 feet of oncoming traffic, at the top of a hill, or at a place that has a no U-turn sign. So I'm going to go ahead and make my full stop here. I'm going to turn all the way up until I almost hit this bush. Then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to turn my wheels all the way the other direction before I start moving. Now I'm backing up again. I'm going to stop when I run out of room. Turn my wheel the other way. Now there's no way I could have made this a regular U-turn in this car because it's kind of a big car, but three-point turns you can do it pretty much anywhere on a nice little narrow road. So let's make a left out of this uh, business area into the left turn lane. So I've stopped at the stop sign. Now I'm going to pull up to the lateral curb line because I can't see anything from back here. And I have to look left and right and I see a lot of cars are coming. So I'm going to be patient and wait a second. And what you can do, if you want, to save some time, is you are allowed to just pull into the yellow lane and then wait for a clearing. So here I go out into the yellow lane. It's clear on the left side. Now I'm going to put my right blinker on and then speed up to about 30. Check my blind spot, merge with the traffic. The only restriction on this is you can't be in that yellow lane more than 200 feet. So if you're in that yellow lane for more than like five or 10 seconds, you're breaking the law and you can get pulled over. But you can always pull out of a neighborhood and this really helps on busy streets into that yellow lane. So I'm gonna go into this left turn lane, checking my blind spot first, of course. This one is another best case scenario, green light, no oncoming traffic, but I still wanna look left and right for red light runner. So right now this light up here is about to turn green. And yes, the green light means you can go. But one of the things you want to do before you go through a green light is I'm going to look right and I'm going to look left. And right now a big semi truck's blocking all my view on the right. But he's like a shield for me, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do want to make sure that I look to the left side of this intersection before I go through because red light runners can 
really injure you or kill you, and I hate to say that stuff over and over, but it's true, and it happens a lot. That's the number one cause in the United States of people dying on the road is red light running, and Arizona is either number one or at the very highest part of the list for that, so be careful. And here's another roundabout. No one's coming through. Just taking it easy. Now there's a merge up here. These are fun. So just get your right blinker, start moving into the middle as long as you're sure there's no one right next to you. Now ultimately it's the person on the right lane's responsibility to merge into your lane, but if you can help them out and just get it done and get it quicker, that will reduce the temptation for them to try to cut you off or to try to beat you, which is this weird pride thing that people do sometimes. They try to beat people at merges and try to floor it at the last second and then put everybody out a little bit of danger for their own you know, pride or whatever it is. But yeah, if you can just kind of block people off, they won't have the temptation to do that. So now we're gonna go from the roundabout to the freeway here. And this is gonna continue in another video about how to drive on the freeway safely. So look for that on my channel as well. Thanks for watching, and I am a state certified driving instructor. If you or someone that you know needs driving lessons, leave me a comment, and I will give you contact information about how to schedule some of those. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.